Do you enjoy our podcasts? Help us to be able to continue creating quality content by visiting our merch store at store.another12.org. You'll find some great merch there, and the best part about it is that a portion of every purchase goes to support the work that we do. Welcome to Drippings from the Honeycomb, the official podcast of Another 12 Ministries. We are so glad that you have decided to join us as we enjoy the sweetness of God's Word, one verse at a time. Hello and welcome to episode 13 on our journey through the book of 1 Peter. I am always amazed at the sovereignty of God. No matter how long I work in ministry, no matter how long I serve God, His sovereignty never ceases to amaze me. When I was actively planning this journey through the books of First and Second Peter, I had no idea what world events were going to happen in the future while I was recording this series. And it amazes me to see how God never misses a beat. The world has been going through a lot of upheaval the last few weeks, and I found it incredibly interesting as I moved into chapter 4 of First Peter to find that the verse that we're going to look at in this episode coincided so perfectly with world events, so perfectly with the thoughts that are going on in the minds of so many Christians, and I think it's very appropriate to see God's hand of planning and all that. It's important to always acknowledge that no matter how big or how small, God's hand is sovereign over everything. And even with a small ministry like ours, with a small podcast like ours, God's hand never fails. It is always perfect, and his sovereignty is above all things. And I just wanted to point that out as we jump into this passage, because it's important to be reminded of that fact all the time. Being humans, being frail, being unable to see the future, we tend to worry, we tend to be afraid, we tend to think that we can control things that are completely outside of our control. And as Christ followers, it's important for us to remember that God is sovereign and only he can control what is actually going on in the world. And not only can he control it, he does control it. That being said, let's jump into our verse for today, which is a short verse. It's found in 1 Peter 4, 7, and it says this, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Now, one thing you know about listening to this podcast is we are adamant about seeing everything within context. And once again, here is a verse that is somewhat of a departure from what Peter is talking about as he is writing this letter to the church. It's kind of this standalone statement that sticks out in the middle of another thought here in chapter 4. It's not totally disconnected from the passage, but it definitely creates kind of an interruption in the passage. So I wanted to read you the whole passage so that you would understand kind of how this fits in and see what I mean when I say that it kind of breaks up the thought as Peter is writing. And we're going to jump all the way back to verse 1 and take it all the way through verse 11 so you can really see everything surrounding this. Starting in verse 1, it says, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. With respect to this, they are surprised when you do not join them in the same flood of debauchery, and they malign you, but they will give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is why the gospel is preached even to those who are dead that though judged in the flesh the way people are, they might live in the spirit the way God does. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love conquers a multitude of sin. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now you can clearly see from this passage that Peter is talking to his followers about the end times. He wants them to be prepared for the second coming of Jesus. He doesn't want them to be unaware of what's going to happen. He doesn't want them to be living in this 
constant questioning of what should we be doing, how should we be preparing for the king to return, he wants them to know that the end is already upon them. The end has come. And this is a reoccurring theme throughout the Gospels. You'll see Peter talk about it. You'll see Paul talk about it. And of course, you'll see the Apostle John talk about it. And what's the reoccurring theme that they are all harping on to the followers of Jesus at the time that they're writing these letters? The end is now. Be ready. Live like it could come at any moment. Live like the kingdom is at hand. After all, Jesus' own message was, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They don't want people looking forward and saying, well, the return of Jesus is far off. The return of Jesus is way away. I'm never going to experience that in my lifetime. That's not something I have to worry about. See, Jesus isn't ready to come back. I don't have to be concerned with it. I know that it'll be after my lifetime. Well, first of all, that's a really arrogant thing for any believer to say, because the scripture says plainly that no man knows the day nor the hour, only the Father knows. And if only the Father knows, then it could be at any time. Jesus instructed his disciples to be ready. If he'd instructed his disciples to be ready, then Jesus' words are to be taken literally here. Be ready. He wanted every generation of believers to be ready. So Peter's words should also be taken literally here. Be ready. Live like the return of Jesus Christ could be this very day. But Peter doesn't just say be ready. He doesn't leave his followers hanging like that. He actually gives them a task. He says, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. What on earth could he possibly have meant by this? Why are your prayers so important? Why was he so concerned about you being sober-minded since we know that the end of all things is at hand? Well, sometimes all you need is a little bit of current events to make you realize what is so important about what Peter is saying here. In the hype, in the fear, in the stress about what is going on in the world, the unrest, when, when wars begin, when people groups persecute one another, When humans are being subjected to suffering and death through wars and tragedies, it seems like this world is just hastening on to its ultimate destruction. It's hastening on to the end of its destiny, and that destiny cannot be good. And it's easy to get caught up in the end times frenzy. Well, maybe this is the end times, or maybe a hundred years from now is the end times. But the reality is we should learn from the past. A hundred years ago, they were saying the same thing as the world melted into world war. 2,000 years before that, Paul was writing to his churches saying, the end is coming. Jesus is going to return. The parousia of Christ is imminent. It's going to happen. You need to be ready for it. And the reality is, we don't know when it is going to be. So we must live like it is going to be right now. We must live like it is upon us. We must live like we are in expectation of it happening. So why do we need to be sober-minded? What's so big about that? Well, Peter wanted his people to understand that if you are caught up in the frenzy of the world, the frenzy of the events of the world, you will lose your effectiveness as a witness for Christ because you will be filled with anxiety, you will be filled with worry, you will be distracted by the nature of the times that you live in. He didn't want his people to be that way. He wanted his people to follow Jesus, to accept the fact that God is sovereign over all things, that he never makes a mistake, that he has authored and penned all of world history, and that everything is happening according to his perfect design that nothing we can do can change it. Nothing we can worry about can impact it. God has set down how he wants this world to go, and he is 100% sovereign over every piece of it. Talk about comfort for the Christ follower. Talk about assurance for the believer. Our God, who is also our Abba Father, who sits in heaven enthroned, living on our behalf, living for us, protecting us, Jesus Christ sitting in front of the throne of the Father, interceding for us, the Holy Spirit living within us, is sovereign over all things. He's sovereign over the universe. We don't have to worry. And Peter wants us to not worry 
so that when we go before the throne of our Father in prayer, something that we know from James has immense power. In James 5, it says, the prayer of a righteous person has great power while it is working. And then James goes on to compare the prayer of believers to the prayers of Elijah, the great prophet of Israel, the prophet who called down fire from heaven at the command of God. He says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. In other words, we're the same as Elijah. We are human, we are sinful, we are fallible, but those of us who have put our trust in Jesus Christ and follow him, we have a relationship with God like Elijah. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. And Peter gets this. Peter understands the power of righteous prayer, and he doesn't want the believers in his churches to be completely overwhelmed by the events of the day. He wants them focused on the kingdom. He wants them praying for the success of God's kingdom. He wants them focused to pray effectively for the kingdom of God because he knows that their prayers have power. Now, let me caveat this for a minute. When I say that the believer's prayer has power, I do not mean that the believer can somehow lay hold of a power that can sway God back and forth. God has interwoven the prayers of his children with his plans and he hears them and he gives ear to them and he answers them. That is why the prayer of righteous people has power because the Holy Spirit teaches those whose hearts are fixed on Jesus Christ how to pray and how to be part of the plans of God through prayer. Don't get jaded by this here. It's not like man can sway God, but it's also not like we are robots living out God's plan and that's that. And we can't pray and have an impact on the heart of God. But the heart of God is sovereign. God has weighed our prayers into his plan already because he has laid out the history of the world. We know that when Moses prayed before God on the mountain, when the children were sinning, the children of Israel were sinning, and God was telling Moses, stand aside, I'm going to wipe them out and make a great nation out of you. And Moses stood before God as a picture of the way that Jesus would stand before God and said, don't destroy your people. You have promised to prosper them and to give them this land. And of course, that's a paraphrase I'm giving you there. But the point is that God was never in danger of breaking his promises. He was never actually going to destroy Israel. But he had ordained for Moses, a righteous man, to stand in the gap and to pray and to intercede on behalf of the people of Israel, just like the Messiah was going to come and stand in the gap. And in the lives of millions and billions, billions of believers throughout the ages, God has ordained times where our prayers come before him and he honors them and answers them and weaves them into the beauty of his sovereign plan. And Peter wants the believers in his churches to be used to the maximum level by God. He wants them to be effective in prayer. And they cannot be effective in prayer when they are caught up looking for the mysterious signs that will tell them when the end of the earth will happen, a time that we cannot know because Jesus himself said that only the Father knows that time. Believers, we are going through a difficult time in our history right now. We are going through an uncertain time in our history right now. But our focus as Christ followers should be on one thing and one thing only, and that is the kingdom of God. We have to be centered on seeking him and seeking the coming kingdom. We need to be focused on praying for the lost and on bringing them the gospel. Our entire heart should be completely consumed with the mission of Jesus Christ. Are world events frightening at times? Are they concerning Do they impact our lives? Yes, they do. But we serve a God who is utterly sovereign over all things, and he has promised to care for his children 
even when that care means leading us through trials, through persecution, and at times even through death so that we can stand in his presence as good and faithful servants. So as you look at the events, as you see the events that are happening right now, as they weigh on your mind, which they do for all of us, remember God is sovereign. Remember that your job is to focus on Jesus Christ and on his kingdom. You are to be active in prayer. This verse presupposes that the believer is consumed with a duty to pray for God's coming kingdom. And remember, the goal of keeping your eye on Jesus Christ is so that you will remain sober-minded so that your prayer life will be effective. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Drippings from the Honeycomb. If you would like to learn more about Another 12 Ministries and the work that we are doing to train ministry leaders to bring the gospel to all people, visit another12.org. If you would like to support our ministry, click on the donate link in the description below.